it's gonna be a beautiful weekend. The sun's out, temperatures are fair, and we're gonna be spending the night at Mount Rainier National Park. And for the first time ever, I'll be doing my first snow camp. I'm gonna talk about all of the necessary gear that I need to make sure that I stay warm. And snowshoes. And of course, don't snowshoes, don't forget snowshoes. So one thing about Mount Rainier is that it pretty much has snow all year round. So, you know, we're gonna definitely expect some snow. Uh, because it's still early in the February uh, month, we gotta make sure that we have some snowshoes. That way we could transcend, because once we basically park. So the idea is we're gonna park at one of the visitor, visitor center and make our way up towards this paradise paradise and find a little nice secluded spot for all of us to camp we have about um, a total of three different tents that we're going to be setting up three or four different tents that we're going to be setting up um, what else babes look at, the view. look at that view yeah. we'll get some view of that but look at that view so right now the temperature is pretty warm it's about 54 degrees but you know especially once you hit the nighttime it's going to definitely temperatures are definitely going to drop to maybe the 40s so it's still pretty relatively warm but you know we want to make sure you stay warm uh, a couple of things i do want to mention is that she was saying, you know, you want to get to Mount Rainier early because what can end up happening is that the gates will end up closing. So if you don't get to the gates um, early enough, you basically won't be able to get inside the, uh, the national park. So you want to make sure we get in early, but it's okay to basically exit. Exiting's okay, you just can't get in for whatever reason or another. And I think there is going to be an entrance fee. So I think the entrance fee is what? $30? I'm not sure. Probably, unless so, you have the National Park Pass. So if you have the National Park Pass, you basically have the ability to enter the park safely, or rather not safely, but you know, free. But you already paid for the parking pass. But yeah, we're expecting to pay at least 20 or $30 to enter the park. But uh, yeah, I am really, really excited. So yeah, let's go ahead and make our way over towards Mount Rainier National Park. All right, everybody, so we finally made it to our first little rest stop over here at Longmire over at Mount Rainier uh, National Park. And it, the drive took about two to two and a half hour drive. I mean, it's a long drive, but it's very, very beautiful. I mean, just the fact that it's such a sunny day, like it's, you can't ask for any better weather, honestly. Temperatures are about 45 to 55 degrees, at least that's what it's predicting for today. But, you know, one of the nice things about living in uh, Seattle, you know, particularly in Seattle, is that, you know, in, no matter what area you're standing in, or basically no matter what area you're in, you always get a good view of Mount Rainier. And the fact that there's clear skies, clear blue skies, no clouds in sight, you just have such a beautiful view of Mount Rainier. So we're gonna take a little break at La, this place called Longmire. That way we can go ahead and use the restrooms as well as let the other people catch up behind us because they were kind of, um, we kind of got separated a little bit, but we'll go ahead and park it for a little bit, make sure they could catch up. And uh, we're gonna continue to make our way up towards Paradise, it's Paradise. And once we get there, let's go ahead and set up our gear, basically put our clothes on, get our backpacks ready and start setting up for camp. All right, everybody. So before we start making our way up towards the paradise, uh, before we start setting up camp, I do want to mention is that you do have to register at the visitor center and basically pay a, a registration fee. Uh, in this case, it wasn't very much. I mean, we have about six people in a group and we end up paying about $6 for the evening. Uh, then once, once you register, the rangers will basically go ahead and explain like what the ins and outs of like being able to safely camp in the area. So I'm not gonna really mention a lot of the things that uh, that are required because they're gonna go over that, all of that with you. But just make sure that you have all of the appropriate equipment, appropriate gear. They do mention something about bringing the tent essentials, right? Hopefully we have all that, hopefully, because you know, kind of winged it actually, to be honest. But yeah, let's go ahead and head to Paradise because they did say that the gates do close at about four o'clock. So we do want to make sure that we end up uh, getting past the gate before it closed. Otherwise we're kind of like screwed, right? So let's do that. All right, everybody. So we finally parked at the one of the Paradise parking lot areas, which is basically the area of where we could do overnight parking. And before we start getting ready to start putting like our pack, like our snowboard pants, or you know, warmer clothes, starting to get a little bit cold in my opinion. The drive, I mean, did you guys see that drive? It was so beautiful. I mean, just fact that again, gorgeous, clear blue skies, no cloud in sight. You could clearly just see how majestic, how large actually Mount Rainier is. Cause I've never actually been uh, to this part of Mount Rainier before I've gone through the sunset side, but never the paradise side. And it's just a whole, new level of like scenery because i've only come in the summertime too by the way and never in the wintertime and i just have to say make the trip make the drive definitely definitely worth it but let's go ahead and get um some of our snow gear ready and uh let's start making our way for snow camping
Hey, what's up everybody? So we finally set up our camp spot and from the parking lot to our destination, didn't really take us too long, maybe about 10 to 15 minutes, but we want to find a place that had an area where we could actually set up a, a cave slash igloo. Really, really cool. Uh, but we did finally set up our tent. Now, the one thing I would recommend that I did not do actually is my tent is set up for like the summer, although it's a three season tent, it's set up for like the summer. And as a result, my spikes or rather my stakes are very, very small, very, very narrow. Didn't really end up sticking in the snow very well. So I'd highly recommend if you guys are gonna be doing some snow camping, definitely, definitely come by and actually purchase some of the snow stakes. They're a lot thicker, a lot wider. Therefore it sticks to the snow much more clearly, but check it out, check out our setup. So as you can see, we got a nice little bed mattress right there, nice and inflated. We've got a little sleeping bag, and of course we haven't quite inflated our pillows yet, but really, really comfortable. And the reason why I want to go ahead and pick this opening is because if you wake up, if you imagine waking up in the morning, unzip, turn around, what do we have right there, right? Gotta make this. You get the ice layer, huh? It's got a magnificent view of Mount Rainier, so awesome. Now take a look at this, come, come follow me, come follow me. Check this out, okay? We've got a man right here, Justin. He's making what's called an ice cave. Took about at least half an hour to an hour making this ice cave, but he's working hard. Working hard, we'll give him some time to work on that, so. All right. All right guys, so we're pretty much gonna, I mean it's still pretty early, but we're basically just gonna chill for the rest of the evening. And uh, we'll see how this setup holds. I mean, I'm hoping, it's my first time going snow camping, so we'll see what happens tomorrow morning if I'm frozen to death. And anyways, bye. Hey, good morning everybody. So we survived tonight, although it was a little bit miserable to be honest. So remember, <laughs> first time snow camping, but didn't do a good job. One, it was a little cold. It was a little cold, so that tells me that I need to get better material, better equipment. Um, two, we slept on a little bit of a slant, so every time we were, you know, throughout the night, we'd be sliding down, like, ugh, horrible. So make sure if you plant your tent, make sure you're nice on nice, even ground. Um, that way you don't keep sliding down on the bottom and hitting your feet on the bottom of the tent. But, but, take a look at this. All right. Oh. Look at that morning hair. We wake up though to some beautiful, beautiful scenery. Check this out. Oh. See that? That's beautiful. Simply amazing to wake up to, you know? Anyways, that was a fun, fun little experience. My little lady here is cold. So, all right, we're gonna get ready and uh, catch up in a little bit. So, what do I check out the uh, sunrise earlier this morning? Um, sunrise was about seven o'clock in the morning. So all we had to do is just hike a little bit over a ridge and this is the this is the view we get. Waking up, aside from the mountain up there, this is the view. It's so amazing to be able to wake up and just, just have no words, I have no words, it's simply beautiful. But if you look over there, over at the horizon, over this somewhere there, that is basically the visitor center for the paradise. Really, really cool. And if you look at the, over there on the other side, although there's no ski resorts, there's no skis, ski lifts going up and down, you could definitely see a lot of the ski trails. So a really, really popular place for people to come by and do some cross country skiing, kind of hike up on your own, find a little spot and just come back down on your own. So really, really cool. So that's what a lot of people end up doing here actually, is that you'll spend a night, you'll camp and just kind of 
cross country ski, snowshoe, and just kind of walk around and enjoy just the majestic beauty of Mount Rainier, honestly. And I remember last night we were kind of walking up towards our uh, campsite, or trying to find a campsite. We saw a big group of people just kind of setting up camp, learning how to do igloos, and it turned out that they were part of a Boy Scout group, and it was something that I never actually had a chance to do when I was growing up, but it seems really fun to be able to learn how to just do an igloo, build a caves and all of that good stuff. Speaking of caves, let's go ahead and check out our cave that we ended up doing last night. All right, check out this cave that we took five hours to build. Come take a look. All right, take a look. We made stairs. All right, stairs, all right. Come and join this humble abode that we have made for us. So as you can see, nice and comfortable. Lay down, fits approximately six people, six small people sitting like this. So anyways, now that we have made our cave, took us five hours to build, we have to go ahead and dismantle this now because of the rules and regulations that we cannot allow caves here, or something like that. Basically once you make a cave, you gotta dismantle it that way in the event that someone comes over, it doesn't collapse and you make a big hole, you know? All right, let's collapse the cave. We're about to go ahead and just start dismantling all of our equipment so we can get ready to basically get out and uh, head back down. But, you know, this was such a fun and magnificent new experience actually, because I've gone camping before, but I've never actually gone snow camping before. And primarily it was due to, again, one, I, I already know I mentioned this earlier, but just I really didn't have anyone to go to or go with. And two, I don't really know what to expect, right? Because when you think about snow, you think about cold, discomfort, it's just chilly, right? You, the first thing you want to do is go into a warm cabin, warm up, turn the heater on and just, you know, be warm, right? But in a condition where it's a snow, it's cold, could be windy, you never really know what to expect. But in this case, you know, this was a perfect experience for me to really, really try out uh, snow camping for the first time. Because one, perfect weather. I mean, if you look at it right now, it's still blue, still sunny. And the fact that you could see Mount Rena just right over this ridge, right, right, you know, fantastic. Two, no wind. Like it's pretty much very, very, no wind. I don't know what the adjective is, it's just not windy at all. It's just very, very perfect. Uh, not too crowded uh, as far as Mount Rainier is concerned. I mean, there are a lot of people that come here to go camping. Uh, I never actually knew that actually. So one thing I do want to mention is that, um, again, you, you, do, you do need to get a permit to register to come and basically camp here. Uh, but the other thing that you can actually do is you could camp in your car. So there's this one area uh, where we park where it's basically an overnight car parking area where if you have like an SUV, you have like a flatbed truck, for example, you know, a flatbed truck with like a the indoor, like what do you call it, the the homes, whatever you call it. You could basically just sleep in your car. If you feel like, you know what, I don't want to set up a tent. I don't want to be out in the cold too much. I want to be comfortable where it's kind of like, you know, some linen or some like ex enclosure, right? Definitely come by and just get your car, sleep in the car and you know, just that's it. That's it. So anyways, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and hopefully I explained this uh, as well as I can. Again, it's my first time, but I definitely want to go ahead and get some better equipment next time because I think my tent was not too well equipped to sustain the colder temperatures because again, we had a miserable time for the most part, miserable time. It wasn't as pleasant, right? Because normally when I, when I go camping in general, I don't sleep, in, I don't sleep well in general because I'm always afraid like someone's gonna come and like murder us, you know? Or like there's gonna be some crazy like bears coming in, some wolves or just something that's gonna like come and like disrupt our like environment. So every time I hear like rustling or I hear some noise in the background, I think like, what is that? What's going on? Are we gonna die? You know, something like that. Uh, but I need to get better equipment. How was your camping experience? Was it nice? Incredible. But cold. Incredible, but cold. So anyways, for the next time, I definitely want to go ahead and get better equipment. So I do want to get my own like jet boiler, for example, where I could heat up my own food. Uh, what else? Slightly better sleeping bag and just just a better setup, right? Making sure not to set up our tent at an incline or a decline, that way you don't feel like you're sliding off and just finding a nice plate where it's flat. And basically, that's it. That's it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.